Hey guys, Uja here. Starting the assembly of the uh, E-Flight F15 64mm. It's the first one I'm putting together here this March. The first thing it tells you to do on this thing is to install the, uh, the nose gear wheel, which seems kind of odd because it says to put the nose wheel on, then put the wings on, and then put the main wheels on. I'm going to skip that process and just go to what makes sense to me. I'm going to put the wings on first. Now the way I'm going to put this wing on is a little bit unorthodox as compared to what most of you would do. And I'm not saying that my way is a better way. It's just I come from a background where the 64 millimeter EDFs, they were old 3S five-bladed fan jets, and they did not have the carbon rod here for the wings and they didn't have the screw on adapters for the wings you just simply had the foam wing and you glued it into place with no reinforcement and I would always make reinforcement by adding some uh, sticking some short fiber rods into the fuselage and into the wing but you always glued the wings on but coming from the glue history and that progression, I still had a tendency to add a little bit of glue to the wings. And I was glad to have the screws as a much more main structural reinforcement along with the, with the rod. But that didn't, it didn't make me not want to use any glue at all. I understand all of you guys who were saying, look, if you need to change the wing, after you have an accident, you really don't want it glued on. Well, because of that, I'm not going to glue it entirely. First thing I do is stick the carbon rod through the fuselage. It goes right through the fuselage and out the other side. So both wings share the same rod. I'm going to use, I've never used this before. So any of you guys who have, you'll let me know quickly whether or not I wasted my time. This is Foam Cure uh, RC glue. It's an EPP foam glue, but it's also flexible. It's a flexible glue. I'm assuming, I'm just assuming, it's the same kind of glue that they use for the canopy and for this cover that covers the ES uh, speed controller, the ESC and the wires. I'm hoping it is. I don't know. I've never used it before, but my plan is I'm just going to use a little bit. I'm just going to use it around the edges. Just near the edges. But not in the center. And that way, if I have to take the wing off, I can get an X-Acto blade down into where that glue is. If it's flexible, like it says it is, I can cut into the glue and free it up and still be able to remove the wing. That's what I'm hoping for. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to glue around the, the very edges here and smooth it out just so I have a little bit of, it's a, it's, a, it's a piece of mind reinforcement to know that there is glue in there just in case by some strange event these screws back out of the wing. I don't ever see that happening. I don't think it ever has. But it's a peace of mind thing. Because when you really think about it, you have metal threaded inserts here which are pretty strong but your hole in the wing the wing where the screw goes in to screw into this piece is just a plastic countersunk hole so it's a little plastic hole that's countersunk so your the strength of your wing remaining on here is in these countersinks and they're plastic at least I think they're plastic they look plastic and I just want a little bit of extra reinforcement. That's all. Okay, I've already pre-fit this thing on here once and tested the screws so I know that they line up. One of my earlier, I put, I put it around the edges, just that, a little streak around the edges just for security. Not a lot of glue on there, just a little. Just in case anything ever backed off. You lift up on the wire a little bit on the fuselage because it has a tendency to get in the way. Now 
Now these screws here, they're two millimeter, two millimeter AL, AL excuse me, Allen heads. Two, two millimeter Allen head uh, flat countersunk screws. You want to lift, push in and lift up, or actually down because it's inverted, but with the airplane on its back, you want to lift up on the wing to get the wing flush. Just get the screws started. Don't go all the way with it. Just get it so it's really got a bite, but not screwed all the way down. Because you do have to pull one end in after you get the other end started. Alright, so I'll get this one screwed in and then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other side without the camera because I don't want to take too much of everybody's time. Going down real nicely here. I'm just hoping that it, when it hits the bottom it has a good snug just like that. Good snug tightening. And hopefully the, they're not stripped. Ah, that's good right there. You don't want to over tighten because like I say, the wing side of that is just a plastic countersink. The glue I put is just on the actual edges of the wing, top and bottom. So if I do have to take it off and it's glued, I can hopefully cut through there with an X-Acto free it up and then pull the wing right off if I had to. If you just started out with the, these newer versions with just the screws and the, and the carbon rods, I can totally understand having no need to put any glue on it whatsoever. Until you get to the tail surfaces, of course, they will require glue. So that's on. So the next thing to do is I'll, I'll probably hook up the wires on the bottom and then I'll go to gluing on the, uh, the fins in the back. Okay. When it comes to these type of connectors connecting the wings to the fuselage, it's usually a case where one end is usually too long. And sometimes you actually have to re-thread the wires a little bit so that when they go together you don't have a balled up one end. I'm pretty confident that we can fit we can fit both of these and any excess wire into this cutout. So that's what we're going to try and do anyway. Let's get this thing hooked up. Make sure you get your polarities correct. And seat it all the way in. As far in as it can go. Just to make sure that she's got a good connection. And she's not going to want to back off. That's good. If you want to, you can tape these but I'm not going to bother I may live to regret it yeah like that I think we will what I have is get that off of there I have white electrical tape and I have I don't have gray electrical tape I could ever find it but I do have gray duct tape so what I'll probably end up doing is taking my, my gray duct tape and just putting a strip over these wires so that it covers them being exposed. And on the other side, for this guy, we will do the same thing with white electrical, white electrical tape. I have never bound a uh, AS3X receiver yet, other than on a, on a micro. So I don't know. I have to work through all that. If you've done it before, for you guys who've had other AS3X airplanes, you know, I envy you because learning that for the first time could be a, a project. All right, got that in there, got that in there. Might even be able to give it a little bit of play. That should be good. So that there I can cover with white electrical tape. All right, guys, when it comes to uh, covering up these wire cutouts and cutouts for the wire connectors. I end up doing is I end up buying a pack of colored electrical tape. You can get this at pretty much any hardware store that sells any sort of electrical tape or electrical 
you know, components. And most places will have an assortment of different colors. And this here is a package. You can, I bought this at Walmart at times. I bought the same thing at uh, Obershawn's. So pretty much any true hardware store will have this. What it gives me the ability to do is for planes like my Blue Angel, my F-18, I can cover the wire cutouts with the blue. Uh, my red Dynamwaco, this works great for covering wires there. When I ran the wires up behind the strut, I just covered them with this. So, but I can only really find these three, uh, I'm sorry, these five colors. I haven't been able to find gray, but I got white, and white will cover this just fine. But when it comes to the gray, and I got a couple planes that have gray or silver, for those, I just end up using a gray duct tape, and I just cut a strip out just to fit over it, and that seems to work. I trim the end at an angle so it can just kind of go over this. I didn't go at enough of an angle, apparently, so I'm going to cut it in more of an angle. That looks better. And it should reach all the way up to the fuselage. I put it on just like that. And I may have to do this in two pieces that. I already took a little bit of the blue off right there. That's annoying, but I'll have to touch that up. That's what I don't like about the paint on these models is they, it takes nothing to peel them up. Nothing at all. Put that over the like that. That, like that. Alrighty. So that takes care of that wire. Sadly, I took a little bit of blue off right there, not much. For the other side, I'm just going to do the same thing. Only I'm going to use. I'm going to use the gray duct tape. Okay. So here's the uh, the gray duct tape. Now duct tape doesn't cut quite so easily as electrical tape. At least not with the scissors that I have. But well, fortunately, I didn't have any of these weird uh, camouflage angles I had to configure in with the tape. I could just put a straight piece. I made a little slight angle up here for that blue. But like I said, it doesn't cut very cleanly, so any of the ruffled edges, I made sure I put on the trailing edge side. So the leading edge side of the tape is clean and sits nice and clean and flush. You just gotta press down the, the ruffled side. But it conceals all the wiring, so now I have both, both sides where the wiring comes off the servos are covered up. This is one of the drop tanks, the fuel tanks. It has a spot on the side here for if you want to attach the missiles. I'm not sure I'm going to put the missiles on. I might just leave it as a fuel tank. But it has a slot right here, a little grooved slot for going into the wing and sliding on. You stick the, the notches into the wing and you slide it backwards, assuming you do, like that, and it locks the fuel tanks in place so that you can operate the airplane. You can operate the airplane with the fuel tanks on it. And it's on really nice and sturdy, I like that. 